How to train a boarhound. We're in Sweden to find out how they prepare their dogs for close encounters of the porcine kind. Wants to make a bigger noise on the marsh, wildfowler Matt shows us his new monster duck hailer. Go quite far! It is back to school and for all you mums and dads with time on their hands, the game seasons are upon us. Welcome to Field Sports Britain. Some dog breeds have more in their blood. Here is where owners find out just how much. Tim has been invited to Mamimijacht in Sweden. They train a thousand dogs a year here to hunt wild boar and somewhere within these fenced training grounds there's a boar for every occasion. Take a dog that's one year old, never met a wild boar before and if I put them in level four, he will never hunt wild boar afterwards. For the youngsters and beginners, there's Pontius, the pet pig. He's big enough, but if this were an Indian restaurant, he'd be a korma. However, once your dog is happy with Pontius, he or she will progress through four other stages, finishing with the fire-breathing, snorting farl. <laughs> If they manage in here, they get their stripes, an officially recognised diploma. But don't assume every dog will eventually make the grade. It needs to be mentally strong. It's maybe one out of 25 who can be good, uh, really good. To take us through the process, we're being looked after by Lars's son, Michael. Michael runs the boarhound training side of this estate's business. There's a lot more here besides, but today we're focusing on the dogs, plus there's a chance of a high-seat boar this evening. Come. So let's start at the beginning and punch us. He's not keen to maybe get on to film, you know. Come. You see this size on the wild boar, now he has, uh, you know, been eating, you know, he has how much food he wants to, but that's the size of, uh, that we can train on. And he is 17 months old because he was born in January. There are some dogs in the training that is afraid of the wild boars, you know, when you go into the fence or so when the, the clients go into the fence with the dog uh, and they see the wild boars, they get afraid. Then you go down to Pontus, then the client can stand outside the fence here with the dog. You can show the dog the wild boar so it gets used to see it, you know, because a lot of the dogs is afraid to see the wild boar and then they go away. So you used this tame one to just look at it. And he's really showing off today. <laughs> <laughs> I never see him like that. That must be when you're filming him. He's doing his best. <laughs> it's all about really protecting the dog. What you don't want to do is send a, a lovely dog into a, a level four and it gets beaten really hard, dog loses interest in hunting. So there's a careful progression through the different levels. And uh, they start from level one, obviously, work their way up to level four. Look, it's bitten. That's bitten. Michael ups the ante a bit. And instead of the boar being held at bay or running away from the dogs, the hotter pigs start giving some back. Hey. So you just walk in and you just release the dog. Just release yeah. the dog and say right, and you just wait 
to see, see what happens. See what happens yeah. Normally, if you go when we go in with a client, you go into the fence, you will walk up against the wind. You walk in the area for one round. You let the dog do the work because then you can see what the dog, what the dog is doing. But if the dog doesn't uh, work like you have think it is going to be working, then you have to help the dog and then you have to try to flush up the wild boar by itself. We're cl quite close to the to the boar, and the dog now needs in still his, his training is the support. He'll come and and ah, oh, are you here? and he goes back again. And what happens then, the attacks nearly come uh, immediately. And that's very normal that the attack comes when the dog comes back to the owner and it goes in again and the attack comes so the directly. Ball, so, so as soon as the dog goes back to back the boar, the boar will, yeah, will attack. And then you will also get the chance, if it was in a real situation, you will have the chance to shoot mm. because the dog is away and the, the, the boar is standing by itself. I really like him because he has a contact with me because we could have some good hunts together this uh, him and me because I will always have a dog who is listening to me and you get effectivity of it when you're hunting during the season. He's getting tired of it. I knew that it would happen because they're too aggressive for him uh, in his training. The Swedish love using dogs for hunting, whether it be wild boar, moose or bear. A dog is an essential part of hunting life here, and the main reason Lars, a Dane, came here in the first place. However, not all the dogs attending the course will be used to actively hunting with their owners. It's becoming increasingly popular to be a registered follow-up handler and hound, tracking wounded animals. As the boar numbers rocket in Sweden, so does the need for professional handlers. Oh, speed is okay. Next time, Tim gets so an expert tuition from Lars about Wait, driven game and, more importantly, charging game, as he prepares for hunting boars with hounds. For more information about dog training and the rest of the estate's facilities, go to mummymayaks.se. For the kit Tim uses, have a look at the links in the description below. Tim having a great time in Sweden and we'll see more rucksack and rifle in the next few weeks. Plus, co-sponsor Harkila, as in previous series, is giving away one of those rucksacks. For his recent trips, Tim's been using the Slim Pack with camera holder. Just write Slim Pack in the comments below if you want to be in with a chance of winning one. Entries close on the 20th of September 2016 and something else to weigh you down. It's David with the Field Sports Channel News Stump. This is Field Sports Channel News. The lack of support for Australian Olympic shooting gold medalist Catherine Skinner has led to a campaign to show love for shooting. Beretta Australia has put up a billboard featuring Catherine on one of Melbourne's busiest freeways, encouraging shooters to upload selfies. Tag your photo, hashtag I am a shooter. A shooter from Virginia, USA, has protected her film star neighbour from unwanted photographs by shooting down a drone. 65-year-old Jennifer Youngman lives near the home of actor Robert Duval. She was cleaning her 20-bore shotgun when she saw a drone flying towards his house, so it was the work of moments to load it and shoot. She says the drone operators fled. Chris Packham is not a bunny hugger, says Chris Packham. Hunters should be allowed to shoot deer and mink for a fee, says the BBC TV presenter. He says that hunting can tackle overpopulation. Antis are furious with him. However, Packham has added his voice to calls for a ban on wildfowling in Findhorn Bay in Scotland and he's held a small protest there last week. A couple of calls to action for you this week. There is a petition to keep grouse shooting at bit.ly forward slash protect grouse. Meanwhile, Gundog and Rescue Rehoming in Northern Ireland is fundraising via bit.ly forward slash Gundog Rescue. Thanks to viewer Matthew Johnson and Mr. Fermanahan for sending these in. And finally, seagull attacks on the up in the UK. Scarborough Council recorded 22 attacks on tourists this summer, with the birds grabbing food from them. 
Meanwhile, a tourist in Brighton taking an artful photograph of an ice cream was photobombed by a bird. You are now to date with Field Sports Channel News. Stalking the stories, fishing for facts. Thank you, David. Now the wild fowling season is upon us and Matt from MPK Custom Calls reckons he's invented the Heineken call. The call that will reach duck that other calls do not reach. Moment is something called Mexican Coca Bolo. It's very hard, the grain's very twisty, it's very hard material to work and work right. So you kind of have to take your time a little bit. And this is where the value in the handmade part is involved because you really need to know how you're going to manipulate this square piece of timber into a three dimensional shape for it to become the beautiful product that it is. I'd like to introduce the distance call. A few of the guys that know me well uh, bought this already because they've, they've obviously had the, the explanation. Um, but we've never really introduced this publicly and I feel like it's about time we did it. It's a larger, louder version of the general purpose call. And for coastal wildfowling, this is my preferred call. When I'm decoying, uh, I will use my general purpose call because they're quite close in and it's ideal for that. When you really need to pull ducks from a distance away, this is the call to have. Um, it's a similar reed assembly, slightly different in its makeup. Uh, a few other certain things that are slightly different that I won't go into. Um, and what I'll do now is I'm going to pass this to Nick. I'm going to continue to talk about the call. And we're going to, as you can see, it's a very, very, very windy day. Um, my, my wonderful assistant is just going to go for a, a quick stomp up the way. Now, I reckon we've probably got 20 mile an hour winds, 30 mile an hour gusts today. I think that's about right. It's probably a little bit too much to, to have gone wildfowling in but I feel like today is kind of the day to show this so if we stop him here so as you can hear that's quite a good sound from that far away in this wind so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to send him back further once he's finished his routine. Yep, so he's going to go back further now and we'll see what we can hear from that far away. And it's worth mentioning that I'm facing head into the wind now, so the wind's going this way. So what that's effectively doing is carrying that sound further back Again, as you can hear, that's still very crisp and very clear. So I'm just going to stop him for a sec. Go quite far! I've sent him further back. It's like I'm training my dog right now, isn't it? Go back, go back! We'll see how far he'll go back. I mean, like I said, bear in mind, that wind is in my face. So that, that is... Keep going! <laughs> Get back! <laughs> that's, um, that's carrying that sound away from us all the time. Yep, go for it! So there's a feed chatter. And again, that's still wonderfully clear. So as you can see, again, he's now walking back. He's got to be, oh, I don't know, a few hundred yards off, 150, something like that, maybe. My eyes aren't that good. Um, but it's you know worth mentioning, David, you'll agree, 30 mile an hour winds in our face. So that sound is effectively being carried further back behind him, yet we're still hearing that clear and crisp as day. Thank you, Matt, and here's hoping that he and David will be getting wet this weekend. That does sound wrong. Now, from the coast to the rest of the world of hunting and shooting on YouTube, it is Hunting YouTube.
This is Hunting YouTube which aims to show the best hunting and shooting videos that YouTube has to offer. Service UK is out with a story that started years ago when Owen Beardsmore and his brother Adrian first observed this malformed hook buck. Adrian is now out to shoot it. Viewer Robin Fox's channel is a mix of rabbit and fox control videos. This video includes film from two outings with his Nightsight Artec Wolf. Facebook star Lisa Taylor records her female goshawk's first kill in this film which is long on dramatic music but the action is fabulous. It took four weeks of training for Lisa and her goss Darla to get this one together so triumphant music would be better. Viewer Ian Graham offers this from Keith Warren. It is life-saving advice for hunters and shooters as Keith luckily does not reload his rifle after a straight miss on a hog. Lucky because that miss was a squib, a round stuck halfway up the barrel. Reloading and pulling the trigger could have been disastrous for Keith. Thank you Ian and thank you Jesse Stevens of Lost River Outfitters who sends in this from massive American channel Hushin. It is not often you get a second chance on a bull elk like this one. Australian viewer Rob from the RDP Project channel on YouTube recommends this film from the excellent New Zealand channel Clay Tall Stories who is out hunting with his 12 year old daughter Hannah. He did not raise Hannah and they don't know each other that well. See how they get on during three days on the South Island. We featured Carl from Devon stalking in last week's show out with Roebuck in Devon and Dorset. Here is his YouTube channel link including this film where he shows the effectiveness of a headshot at 40 yards. And finally, viewer Andy sends in this film about the effect a 243 ticker has on a bag of flour, even at long ranges. He takes the shot at 500 metres. That's it for this week. If you have a YouTube film you would like us to pop into the weekly top 8, send it in via YouTube or email me the link charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. Well, we are back next week. If you haven't done so already, go to our website, fieldsportschannel.tv, where you can click to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, or subscribe to us on YouTube, or even pop your email address into our constant contact box on the register page. And we'll be in touch with you about this show in our weekly newsletter. This has been Field Sports Britain out Wednesday, 7pm UK time. Good hunting, good shooting, good fishing, and goodbye.